let's say you were one week out from the fight or two weeks out from the fight and they moved it a week ahead would that still make no difference to you or is there like uh, yeah like... kind of because i smoke you know <laughs> so <laughs> it, it definitely like i, I need a little <laughs> bit more of a notice for sure <laughs> What up, Fightful fam? Shaquille Madjuri here. And man, me and this man have been on quite the journey today. Journey Newson, how are you, sir? Good, how you doing today? I'm doing well. So you and I uh, had started doing this interview in the AM. And as is the, both the love and the hate relationship that I have with technology, our network connection kind of failed on us. But I appreciate you making time for me again this afternoon. Yeah, for sure. No problem. For sure. So, you know what? I'm not going to run us through the interview we already did, but I will give a quick little recap um, of where we started for the listeners. First, you train, you fight, you train, you fight. A little bit of stock market stuff here and there. That's basically your life. Uh, and then we were talking about your last fight. You got a huge, like, what was it, 26 second knockout? Yeah, uh, 38. 38 second knockout that was uh, overturned by the Texas Athletic Commission over a uh, marijuana violation. You explained that, you know, as far as you're concerned, like, they're, they're not going to take that win away from you. You know that you won that fight. You know that the violation is silly and whatever the commission says, that's what they want to say. But you are a 10 and 2 fighter as far as you're concerned, which I uh, just wanted, I wanted to follow up on that. And I think you have the right mindset there because ultimately the commission may take that win from you on your record, but I think the UFC knows what you accomplished in there. And I think it's being rewarded by the fact that you're fighting Randy Costa on September 19th, who himself is coming off of a huge uh, knockout win over uh, Boston Salmon. For you, how would you like to see like marijuana laws change as it pertains to like athletic commissions and MMA? Because I think we're seeing more and more now. I know the UFC is a relationship now with... Um, I think it's Aurora Cannabis. Elias Theodoro up here in Canada is fighting a lot to get uh, medical cannabis exemptions for fighters. Where do you want to see the sort of marijuana? How do you want to see marijuana evolve in regards to MMA? Um, really just legalize it. Um, not not only like statewide, but like federally as well. Mm -hmm. Like it definitely should be a uh, legalized. There's no. Um, all the things that we've were told about marijuana, you know, in the past, how it's a gateway mm -hmm. drug is, you know, complete bullshit. I think that's been uh, debunked a long time ago, you know. So like now, Texas is, you know, all, all you see all these see all these other states starting to pop up and mm -hmm. uh, be a little bit more friendly to marijuana. I, I mean, I live in Oregon, so like all I can go to the store, you know, two minutes away from me and go pick some up, like I'm picking up a, a bottle of water so it, it kind of sucks that texas and I, I don't know the other states that are you know kind of hesitant on it but mm -hmm. that definitely needs to change because you know you're taking wins off of guys and girls uh who worked their ass off you know to, to get that win and for you for, for them just to take it off just like that when they had nothing to do with the yeah. fight you know it's, it's just it's ridiculous you know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm living up here in Canada and we, I want to say it was earlier this year, could be of last year, my memory's foggy. Now it opened a year ago now. Uh, we legalized marijuana federally, but uh, there have been stories, there have some stories came out where Canadians were traveling to the States and they were asked at the border, have you ever smoked marijuana? Despite it being legal here and people answer yes, and then they're hit with a federal ban from entering the U.S., because it's oh, no federally way. legal in the U.S. So, border police, I have never once in my life smoked the ganja, the devil's lettuce, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and if <laughs> any Canadians are heading down to the south, you should keep that in mind. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about... There's actually one thing regarding your fight that I was curious about. So, you guys, you and Costa were originally scheduled to fight on the 26th, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the UFC moved UFC 253 back, so that fight night got moved over to the 19th. Some fights remained on 253. Some fights were switched from the fight night. Like, there didn't seem to be any consistency. Uh, is there a particular reason that your fight was moved a week ahead? No, I don't really have any idea. Um, I just got a text message from my managers uh, just saying that the fight's been moved to the 19th. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, okay, cool. It's, you know, 
just news, up and coming news. That's fine. Yeah. It's only a week, so it, it doesn't really do much. For you in an ideal camp, like how far in advance could you have gotten that notice and been cool with it? Like, let's say you were one week out from the fight or two weeks out from the fight, and they moved it a week ahead. Would that still make no difference to you, or is there like? Uh, yeah, like, kind of, because I smoke, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it definitely like I, I need a little bit more of a notice for sure. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm I'm definitely a, a marijuana advocate, and uh, it, it helps me with you know stress and uh, relaxing my muscles after a hard day of training. So like I I definitely look forward to it. Like after the day's done, mm-hmm. you know. And so honestly, like I just take that into consideration. Yeah, fair enough. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fight. I well, actually, I'll read you the quote after. But you guys, you and Koss are both coming off these really quick, impressive finishes via strikes. What is your expectations for when you get in there? Like, do you think it's gonna be a fire fight? Do you think it's gonna be more of a technical fifteen-minute thing? How do you kind of anticipate it going? Um. I can see it going either way. Um, I really don't know until I get in there. Um, I, I say it all the time, like, we can game plan all we want, and mm-hmm. a lot of guys, they can game plan all they want, uh, but no one really knows what's going to happen until they walk in there. So let me read you this quote uh, from Costa, and I just want to get, get your reaction on it, get your thoughts on how he's assessing the fight. So he spoke to Cage Side Press, and he said, quote, My resume speaks for itself. Never had a boring fight ever. I'm going there to knock him out with the first punch I'll throw. This fight can't be boring. On paper, it can't be boring. Oh, for sure. So he's he sounds 100% like confident, which is good. Like he should have that mentality of being yeah. confident. Um, I'm pretty sure Domingo thought that same thing though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, like like you said, like everybody can go in there with a the game plan, but shit happens. Fair enough. Um. You seem like a very calm person, uh, and that's not to stereotype what a fighter is or isn't. I think we've debunked a lot of those over the last five, ten years as the sport's grown. But what what is it about fighting that is compelling to you? Um, just the uh, what's that? What I'm looking for. Um, I just said it today too. Uh, <laughs> the hostile environment of it yeah. all trying to stay calm in that in that hostile environmental Mm -hmm. uh state of mind um i think that's what intrigues me more than anything in the fight game that's super interesting and so you kind of talk about using marijuana as a de-stressor uh does it being able to put yourself in those tense situations and thrive does that give you a sense of calm and like in your day-to-day life yeah i mean if i can if I can overcome those type of scenarios, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's nothing that can kind of stand in my way, basically. Fair enough. Uh, what are your thoughts on being, you know, like, I think the UFC's done a really, really good job of putting together big headliners in light of all this pandemic. Uh, what are your thoughts on being on the same card as Colby Covington versus Tyron Woodley? Because that is a grudge it's... match we've been waiting for for a long time as fans. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it wouldn't be the first time I was on a huge card. Uh, I was on the, the card of John Jones and Reyes. That was mm-hmm. a pretty cool card. Uh, I think that was uh, the Hamos fight that I took on short notice. And uh, for for Covington and and uh, who was it? Woodley. Woodley. Yeah, that's that. That should be a really good fight. Um, I don't know exactly who I want to go for. Uh, I I want to I want to say Covington more than anything but uh you know you can't you can't leave woodley out for sure and he's definitely looking to bounce back after a few rough performances uh journeyman i want to thank you for the time today you fight randy costa at ufc vegas 11 on saturday september 19th best of luck and i hope to catch you on the flip side thanks buddy i appreciate it thanks for having me on Bad for-